Hello, welcome to this um, Mid Journey tutorial. In this tutorial, we're we'll going to have a look at uh, prompting and getting some control of prompting. So it's going to be very straightforward. It's um, very good for beginners and good to start to understand the structure of prompts and how to get good things out of it. Now, this lovely slideshow in the back is kind of the results of my four hours of work this morning, uh, making sure that I properly understood what I was talking about. And, uh, it's come out with some lovely images, as you can see. Um, playing with styles and genres and uh, some camera angles. Uh, I love that one. <laughs> um, so we're going to have a look at that. We're going to go through the whole process that I've done this morning. Very simple, very straightforward, uh, very controllable, which is most important. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so we're in Discord now and we're going to start off. You'll see I've done a couple of things here. <laughs> I started and then realised I wasn't at default settings and I want to be. Okay, so we're at default settings now. So we're at V4, uh, style is medium and so on and so forth. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'll start off with is imagining my base subject. So if I type slash imagine a princess and then press enter, it's going to go off and start the job. Now, throughout the video, I'll speed up at these points in time so that we don't get any wasted space. OK, so that's finished and we've got these four pictures of princesses and they're perfectly fine, but they're all a bit too young. That's not what I was intending. And I find that adding a kind of a style to it uh, tends to make them grow up. So if I type slash imagine, one type properly uh, a fantasy princess oops i really can't type today I've been doing it for hours <laughs> there we go there we go she's uh, somewhat older and in the style of a more of a fantasy kind of thing uh, you don't have to stick with fantasy of course uh, there's all sorts of things you can do um, so we'll do a few now so imagine a sci-fi. Oops. There we go. There's our sci-fi princess. What should we do next? Let's have a steampunk one. So slash imagine a steampunk. There we go. Okay, so that's our general subject. Kind of looked at you can you know change the the sort of style and the uh what we're trying to say the style and the subject how uh, to mix them together and you can get some lovely pictures um but that's not what this is about i think i think you could have probably done that on your own um next we're going to change the way um mid journey is going to uh, generate our images and we're going to change the aspect ratio to get what we want uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to go for something that, you know, I could perhaps use as a desktop wallpaper. So we'll have a look at that next. OK, so this is my second attempt at this, which is why we're going to skip all over all these lovely images. Um, now, what I want to do is to limit the amount of um, contribution that Mid Journey gives to my image. So what we want to do is set the stylized parameter. Now you can do that uh, in a couple of ways. Um, you can either go into settings. Oops, I keep putting two slashes in. One day my fingers will figure it out. There we go, one slash. So type forward slash settings. And then down here we've got some style settings. The default is medium, which I believe is 100. Uh, but I'm going to set it to low, which should give Mid Journey less leeway to interfere with my uh, prompt. So with that done, uh, we'll type in slash imagine a cyber, not a cyberpunk, steampunk princess. There we go. And enter that. And we'll let it run. So you'll see it's now got this minus minus S50 on it. On, so it's set the stylized value to 50. 
which will give it less kind of uh, leeway to mess with the prompt. Um, it will stick more to the prompt and add a little bit of its own touch uh, rather than previously where it would uh, do more, you know, 100 instead of 50. Okay, so this is coming in now. There we go. So still got some lovely pictures, um, but Mid Journey has had less to do with it. If I want to take this down even lower, I need to put this back to style medium. Uh, because if I left it at style low, it would always put minus minus S50 at the end, no matter what I put in. So now what I want to do, I'll just control C to a Z to get my prompt back, put it back into the prompt, and then on the end, I'll type minus minus S and one. And that's really going to limit uh, what Mid Journey does with my prompt. Um, I'll show you in a sec what happens when you put it <laughs> at a really high number. Okay, so that's at a very, very low number. So it's interpreting this and adding very, very little to it. Um, let's have a look, see what happens if we make it a really, really big number. So let's change that one to 1000 and then I'll press enter and speed up again. There we go. And not a huge amount of difference, but I would say that these are uh, better pictures. If I look at these, they're uh, somewhat more flat. And if I look at these, they are fuller, more detail and so on and so forth. So with a very simple prompt and using that stylize set to a thousand, um, it's giving us a better image, which is terrific. Um, but once you get a more complicated prompt, it's going to start going um, a little bit the other way. You're start going to start to lose some control over what's happening. OK, so I'm going to leave it there for stylize. But for the moment, for the rest of our uh, prompts, for the moment at least, I'm going to leave it at S1. In the next uh, section, uh, I'm going to change aspect ratios. Um, and then we'll go on to camera angles and such like. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so aspect ratio will have a uh, significant impact on how your um, image is portrayed or you're designed or uh, painted, however you want to put it, by Mid Journey. So the aspect ratio is, you know, the ratio of the image's width to its height. So one by one is what we've got as the default, it's a square. Uh, two by one would be two wide, one high, and one by two would be one wide, two high. So let's do um, a two by one. So just gonna uh, press Control Z to repeat my prompt here, and then minus, minus AR for aspect ratio, and then two by one. Whoops, that's not a colon, so it's two, colon one and this will create me a picture which is two wide by one high now the space that mid journey has to work uh, on an image uh, tends to uh, dictate what sort of image you get back um, if you do a, a vertical one so say one horizontal two vertical uh, you tend to get more uh, body if you like. If you go wide like this, this two by one, um, you tend to get more sort of head and shoulders, especially on a kind of a portrait uh, kind of look. Uh, so I'll speed up here. Okay, so here's our two by one image and we've got a face and we've got shoulders. And let's have a look, see what happens when we change this to a vertical. Uh, so control Z and this now needs to be one by two. So one colon two and press enter. And there we go. Right, so uh, we're getting far more body now. We've even got some full body shots and uh, we've got like a torso shot here. Um, the likelihood of you getting this in the other ratio is very slim. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is um, setting your starting aspect ratio near the beginning of your 
um, work is good because it will give you its kind of default for that and then you can adjust it with other things if you start if you spent most of your uh, session in a one by one square you're not going to get it uh, because as soon as you change aspect ratio it's going to think slightly differently so in this case uh, i want to do a desktop wallpaper for my pc um, and i know the aspect ratio for that is 16 by 9 so i'm going to press ctrl z and then put aspect ratio 16 colon 9 and then press enter okay so that's given me that so i now know that aspect ratio this is the sort of picture i'm going to get for my desktop wallpaper it may not be what i want for now but i can control that somewhat with camera angles and that's what we're going to look at next so i'll talk to you then with our prompt as it is um, we're allowing mid journey to decide what camera angle we're going to use and I don't want that I want to be able to tell it what sort of camera angle I want so there are many camera angles um, but I'm going to concentrate on just a few relatively simple ones so first of all uh, I'm going to use a close-up so this should be a real close-up image of our uh, subject so we press ctrl z and then I'm going to put this at the front at front so close up and then comma now the comma isn't strictly necessary, um, but it's necessary for my human brain to understand <laughs> what's separated from what. Mid-journey uh, generally would ignore it. So let me just press enter and let that run. So that's finished off. And as you can see, every one of our images is now a close-up of our subject. They're all very consistent. It's not, you know, getting closer on one or further away on the other they're all pretty much the same so that's a close-up if you want a really detailed kind of in on the face shot um, if you want something a little bit further away you might try a medium shot so let's control z to get our prompt back and then i'm just going to type in uh, over type that to medium shot make sure i haven't missed anything there we go uh, because I am who I am, I'll quite often leave a character in there or misspell it. <laughs> there we go. So as you can see, we've pulled out a little bit uh, further in some cases than others, but we're generally getting a more medium shot of our figure. Uh, so next one then uh, would be wide angle. So let's have a look at that one. Now it's not a wide shot it's a wide angle there we go and there we go now it's getting interesting uh, if i bring that up you'll see we're getting much more depth to our shot much more in the way of perspective and uh, more interest in our image rather than previous ones which have just been generally flat i don't mean flat as in colors or anything like that i mean in terms of composition uh, it's been you know our figure standing against something or in this case more or less nothing but now we're getting like these really deep perspective lines and it's making it far more interesting uh our next one we could have a wide angle shot as <laughs> already got wide angle it's ultra wide angle let me press that in let it run there we go and now we're getting even more of our wide angle Get more perspective we've got her sitting in some sort of crazy contraption here we've got some kind of curvature going on as it goes into the distance uh, this one's the only one that's kind of not flat but i don't really my brain at least can't really grasp what this is around that um so it might be super perspective -y, <laughs> but i can't tell anyway so that's a uh, shot so i've got one more shot for you it's just a, a more general one and uh, if I press Control Z, there we go. A, and I want just a portrait. There we go, and we'll let that run. There we go, and now we're getting the image in more of a portrait style shot, and they're really lovely.
always amazed at how lovely it comes out really comes out with a rubbish picture <laughs> i mean it does believe me but you know not very often okay so we've had a look at our shots and i think i'm interested in the wide angle shot for my final desktop uh, next we're going to have a look at applying different art styles to our uh, image so i will talk to you next okay so i've just um, generated a few um, of the wide angle shot again just to get us back to the start and now i'm going to apply some different styles to it so there are all sorts of styles out there and i'll put some references below um, to a really great reference that's got loads of different options uh, but i'm just going to do a few uh, here so what we need to do is get our prompt back up again i'll use Control z and then after my steampunk princess the subject i'm going to type in comma and then space again not strictly necessary but it helps me to differentiate what's what uh, and i'm going to put in geiger art so this is going to apply um, a style of the, the artist hr geiger who designed the the alien from the aliens films and prometheus and all those ones and i'm going to press enter Okay, so there we have our uh, Geiger-inspired uh, steampunk princess. Now, there's a certain amount of steampunk still in it, um, but it's got a definite slant towards the biomechanical and the uh, the colour palette of, of Geiger. Okay, so that's a bit more of a dark and brooding one. Uh, let's try a different one. So, Control z uh, Another one you can use is uh, Pop Art. So, let's pop Pop Art in. So pop art and this will do it in that more kind of 70s brightly colored uh, pop art style um, that I grew up seeing all over the place but um, I'm older than probably most of you <laughs> there we go uh, it's still very much a cyberpunk princess but obviously much more bold colors much more hand-drawn look and yeah much more pop arty right what else should we have a look at uh da, 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 da. Well, let's go pixar shall we so control z and again i'm just going to swap out uh pop for pixar and there we should get something which is you know a bit more kind of friendly 3d rendered kind of uh, stuff there we go again much more cartoony you know we're getting uh, bigger head proportions and you know some exaggerations very pixar like shall we say okay so uh another one then perhaps uh would be everybody's favorite anime uh so let me type Control z and i'm just gonna very simply type here anime and let it go okay so there we go um we've tried a few different styles as i said i've put a link below to um a style sheet which just gives you you know dozens and dozens if not hundreds and shout out to uh, that fella for putting all that work in it's uh, it's quite an amazing resource okay so um next i'm going to take you on to a kind of a next level uh, we're going to look at one of our pictures and we're going to examine it and see what Mid Journey thinks of it. So I will talk to you then. OK, so I'm just going to pick one of these to uh, upscale and I rather like this one here. Uh, so these images are is, this is image one, this is image two, three and four. And down here we've got our buttons so we can use the u buttons to upscale and the v buttons to make variations now i wasn't going to show this but um it's only because i didn't think of it if i hit the variations button for v4 it's going to send a job off to the server and return with variations on that image and that's you know a nice way to just have a look see you know what other options you could have <coughs> oh, I did four. I meant two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so I've done it on the, uh, the second picture and we've got a few different options. I can see some. there are some small kind of detailed differences. Yeah, I've got like a, there's a porthole going on there, whereas it's like a door here, porthole here, nothing there. Uh, we've got some extra bits of uh, jewellery and such like on her uh, ears. And yeah, we've got even multicoloured lenses up here. So what I'm going to do is just pick one of these and then upscale it. So let me upscale version uh, 2. Okay, so there's a lovely upscaled image. And if I click on that, we can see what it looks like. It looks lovely. So let me right click and save that image. It's going to save it to my downloads as it always does. And uh, I also just want to copy this link. So if I right click and copy link, there we go. Now, um, the download wasn't strictly necessary. I just need the link. So let's do it uh, with the link. So what does Midjourney think of its picture? Not what it thinks is it's a nice picture, is it? Or whatever. Um, it's what does it think about the structure of the image? What does it think about the art style and the subject? So if we type in forward slash describe and then space, and then we can paste our image link. No, we can't. <laughs> I do have to download it. <laughs> well, it's a good job I did. Right, so let's uh, go and find my downloads folder. It's here somewhere. There's my slideshow folder. Uh, there's downloads. Let's make that a bit smaller. And I'll drag and drop that down there. There we go. And then press enter. Okay, so it's had a look at the picture and it suggested four options for the prompt which might make this work. So we can experiment with these to see what happens. So we've got uh, the girl inside a steampunk ship in the style of a realistic blue skies. That doesn't sound right. Apple core, dark brown with green, anime inspired character designs, epic portraiture, bulbous les automistas okay so if i want to run that one uh, i assume i could click one and it's going to present me with the prompt and i'll hit submit and off it goes and let's see what it comes back with let's see if it's better <laughs> and there we go not bad let's have a look So it's generally kind of aesthetically the same. We've got kind of similar design elements in it all through it. And the girl, you know, looks pretty much the same. Uh, not identical, of course, uh, but it's quite similar. Uh, what I'm looking for here, though, is something like this one. So if I click on number three and submit it, Okay, so this one has come out a little different, and that's okay. Uh, I don't expect all of these to come out exactly the same. But why I was interested in this one is because it included the information that I hadn't included in my prompt, and maybe I want to add it. So Apple Core is some sort of star. Uh, we've got CryEngine, which is a render engine. Uh, bulbous Environment Illustration and D. Uh, detailed facial features so what i might want to do is grab detailed facial features so i'm just going to copy that and then down here i'm going to control z until i get to my last uh, prompt that i ran and then i'm going to add it in so after that comma for the subject i'm going to paste in detailed facial features and then press enter so now we've added to our prompt to give it some more, you know, information. And I find that using the describe um, option um, tool gives you a really good way of, you know, finding out what Midjourney understands. So you can type in all sorts of things and you're not necessarily going to get <laughs> anything back because if 
Midjourney doesn't understand it, doesn't understand the wording you're using. Um, it's largely going to ignore it or interpret it in a different way. Now we've said um, we want a detailed facial features here. So now I'm getting a real close up on the faces because it thinks that that's the most important thing in the composition, even though I've got a wide angle on it. Um, but we're getting a really detailed face. So another thing up here, which perhaps would not change the composition so much is this CryEngine. It's CryEngine's like a, you know, I think it's a, a game engine. If I undo that, so I'll take away my detailed facial features and pop in CryEngine and press enter. And there we go. We've got our um, general composition back, but we have more of a cryo engine um, slant to our images of style in this case. So use describe, um, use it on your own pictures. You know, you can use it on photographs or other pictures or anything you want, and it will give you a good description of the image and how it understands it. Um, so it can give you a real insight into how Midjourney thinks and how it talks. So I hope you found that useful. Um, if you have any questions, please ask me below. Um, but this method should give you good control over the kind of images you're getting out. Um, so yeah, pleasure to talk to you. I hope you have a great day. Talk soon.